Hello gamers, today we're going to be very briefly, very briefly, reviewing Wigfrid and Willow's skill trees because the update actually came out now and they fixed some bugs called no longer in beta, wow, epic. Except, uh, yeah, this isn't on the main channel because the main channel, the video will actually be good, um, whereas the second channel is for garbage, which is just streams and then sometimes streams that are edited together, which is what this is. So instead of it being six hours, it will be like less than an hour, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, and then we'll talk about the new boss as well, but we're going to start with Wigfrid because she's the most popular character. So again, I'm not going to go too in-depth, I'm going to brief overview roughly what's good, what's not, and then we'll move on. My main channel video will be mm, so much detail and, uh, uh, <coughs> we're going to start with Rigfrid because she's more popular, I'm pretty sure, and then we're going to do Willow afterwards. Okay, cool. So, uh, let's start with Headliner. This hasn't changed. What it does is Battle Stingers, which are the songs that have a one-time use. These are the three songs with one-time use, including the, this new song, which we'll unlock. Uh, and so what it does is... Usually, these eat up a certain amount of inspiration, so if I cheat real quick, what's up guys, just cheating here, and I use startling, it eats up uh, 16 uh, inspiration, and then it does the effect, right? But if I have headliner on, and I use it, it does not eat the inspiration, but my song goes on cooldown. Um, but here's the hidden mechanic which makes this kind of awful. You still actually need the inspiration to cast it. So if I try to cast this, um, this song with zero inspiration, it won't work. So, uh, right now we're now 15 inspiration, I can't sing it. So despite me getting rid of the inspiration cost, uh, you still actually need the inspiration to, to cast it, which just kind of makes it stupid. And then the, the real kicker is, uh, I need someone dead, quick, someone join, Mr. Mytha, join in so I can kill you. I, I love killing Mr. Mr. Mytha. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Mr. Mytha here. Back at it again. Dying. Oh, no. It, oh, goodness. He cancelled the damage. He's a pro elite wander. No, no, no. Time to die. Right. So, uh, what's up, guys? It's your boy, Wanda. Okay. Uh, don't worry, Wanda. I'll revive you because, you know, I have the cooldown on, so I don't need the inspiration. Uh-oh. I can't revive you. So, I should really quickly say, this song is really good. It requires Moose Goose Feathers to make along with the Papyrus and the Feather Pencil, but it revives two of your teammates around you, and it requires- it eats up 85 inspiration by default, but with the headliner, it goes on cooldown, but as you can see, ugh, you still need the inspiration. So I, I set my inspiration to uh, 0.86. 86 inspiration, okay, bam! So now I can- I can cast it now. It doesn't eat the inspiration and it goes on cooldown. But the point is, you still need inspiration to cast the Battle Stingers, which is stupid. And also, now I can't spam this. This has a really long cooldown now. And normally, if you're fighting a boss here, let me show you, let me show you. Hold still, hold still. So hypothetically, you're fighting Deer Clops. Your inspiration is going up so fast. Okay, I wasn't, I didn't actually set a timer. Editing Jiggy, quick. How much time does it take to get 85 inspiration? So the point is, when you're fighting a boss, you will get the 85 inspiration back to cast this again way faster than waiting for the cooldown to finish. So, unless you're gonna make like five of these songs, then this cooldown skill is terrible and bad and I hate it. And we've already we've already talked about this song, which is this one, which revives your revives your teammates. Now I'm gonna despawn myself so I can get rid of this trash skill. So it's just like, you still need the requirement, it just doesn't eat up the cost. So it's just kind of weird. I got my desk mat. Wow! Any desk mat enjoyers got their desk mats? Next is the battle canister. This is good. It requires... It's kind of expensive to make. Uh, beeswax, two azure feathers, three gold nuggets, two, two pulls. It's kind of expensive to make, but once you make it, you just need one of them. And then you can just un unlearn this skill. Um, so if I dropped all these songs and then you used... Uh, a moon altar idol to despawn yourself, then uh, you can unlearn the skill so you free up the inventory spot, uh, the free up the skill point. Who stole my canister? They took it. Who did? Yo, true meteor. Oh, Wigfrid, you stole it, did you? Meteor time. Idiot! Never steal my stuff again! Alright, anyway, so yeah, the battle canister, you open it, it's like the polar bear ribbon, it opens and you can put songs in it. Eight songs. Yeah, every passive song, and you'll have one of the affinity songs, and then you can just, and then you use all that. You basically will never use these, like, maybe startling soliloquy. So yeah. Uh, that's pretty good. You can store those eight songs. It's like, yeah, it's fine. But uh, once you learn it, craft it once and then unlearn it. 
so that you free up the skill point. All right, now we're getting into the good stuff. So these two skills uh, increases uh, how much inspiration you get when you're using the battle spear in combat. It doesn't matter. It's cool, but who cares? I'll cover the the actual numbers in the main channel video. But basically, you unlock these to unlock the new spear. Learn to craft the Elding Spear, an electric weapon that does more damage to wet targets. All right. Uh, so TLDR is this weapon is as good as a hand bat. Uh, the Elding Spear is kind of expensive. Uh, it requires two Volko horns. Yeah, you have to kill Volko. It's 25% drop rate, so you're gonna have to kill eight of them to make one of these. Now, that's not too bad, um, except you can't repair this spear. You cannot repair it. Um, otherwise, it's the same damage as a hand bat against a non-wet target. So, uh, kabam, 74 damage. Kabam, 74 damage. Same as a hand bat. But, if your target is wet... So now that things are wet, uh, kabam, I'm doing 111 damage. Wow! Amazing! So yeah, it's as good as a hand bat, but just even better if it's against a wet target. Better than a dark sword. Goodness gracious. And also, yeah, good, good, good thinking. Like, uh, you can give it to non-Wigford characters and they can also use it. Which means, yeah, it's just hand bat, but better against wet targets. Cool. Alright, moving on to the next thing. Next Next thing is the Elding Spear can now perform a special attack. This attack repairs charged Elding Spears if it hits a target. So what this special attack is, is Kabam. Uh, it's, yeah, you just, you, you dash and you hit everything in the line that you dash. So if, hypothetically, you spawned 100 frogs and then you dashed into all of them, you kill everything that was uh, around you. Uh, let me turn off god mode, so... Wah! Ah, all my stuff, no! Alright, so yeah, and you... Yeah! So yeah, you kill a AoE damage for Wigfred, so it's pretty good. So yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, yeah, cool. Wow, epic. And uh, as for DPS wise, um, it is better DPS to hold F than to use your special attack, uh, just so you know. But we still have the problem that you cannot repair the spear. So let's move on to the next skill, which says upgrade the Elding Spear using a restrained stack to deal plus 20 power damage. Wow, let's uh, upgrade that, hell yeah. All right, so restrained, restrained stack is the thing that Wagstaff gives you when you do his experiments in the Moonstorm events. And so he gives you one of these. Wow, cool, right? Um, and then you use it on your Elding Spear. Now it is charged, wow. And so now it does the same damage, except it does plus 20 power damage. Um, and so when I when I dash, it goes from 127 to 147. Wow, cool. Yeah, so you just do 20 power damage now. Cool. Uh, power damage, I'm not explaining it. Go watch my Wolfgang guide video. That explains, <laughs> that explains power damage pretty good. But looking back at this skill, this attack repairs charged Elding Spear if it hits target. Wow. Uh, which is this special attack. So now, oh look, a butterfly. Cool, I love butterflies. Hiya! Oh wait, I missed. Yeah! Uh, so you get back... Three hits? Oh, it's four hits? Yo, Mr. Mytho, so you get four durability back, right? Like four actual uses, but it's 2%, right? Right, 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 right. So as long as you land the special attack, you get like four durability back. And its cooldown is such that you ha you can do two normal attacks into a special attack every so often. So one, two, so special attack. One, two, special attack. Uh, one, uh, goodness. And if your target is far away, you can only get like one attack, but whatever. It is better DPS just to hold F. It's not better DPS to keep spamming the charge attack, unless you're fighting more than one enemy. But what if there are two enemies? So because these targets are wet, um, I am doing more damage. So it still does electric damage, but then it just does 20 power damage on top of everything else. Good question, Jonathan Wurtz12. Alright, anyway, so now if I special attack, I'm at 90% durability. Hiya! 94%. Whereas if I just hit one target... I'd be go up 2%. So, yeah, um, but that only scales with two targets. If you hit more than two targets, you don't get any more durability if you hit two targets. Two or more targets. Yo, is that Fancy Banjo with a red hat? Hello, Fancy Banjo. I saw you in the most recent animated short from Clay. Very cool. Nice top hat. It's mine now. So I could tell them, tell you the math, but I'm not going to. You can go watch yesterday's stream if you want to know that. But the TLDR is, this spear is best in slot for Wigfrid everywhere, assuming that you use... Okay, hold on. How do I phrase this? I'm gonna drown you. Come come with me, Wigfred. It's time to drown. You're lucky I can't find the ocean. Oh, I found it. Good night. So yeah, if we check as well, um, this Elding, Elding charge, the charge version of the Elding Spear also gives you 20% movement speed. Wow. Otherwise, the TLDR for this weapon is for Wigfred, it's her best in slot for everything, especially if your target is wet. 
The only competition the uh, the charged Elding Spear has for Wigfrid is if you use Shadow Reaper with Void Cowl. So with a hit streak of 6, you're doing 81 damage. Whereas with this, you're doing 64 damage. Not good. But once you use the Enlightened Crown, which also does a separate hit, it does more damage. So TLDR is, this spear is Wigfrid's best in slot everywhere. It, it's like, assuming that you're always using an, an Enlightened Crown with it. Uh, and it always, and your Enlightened Crown always stays up, which is very easy for Wigfrid. That's the TLDR, not talking about the math. All right, let's keep going. So that's that's the spear. Wow, very cool. I love the spear. Next is the helmet. Uh, these two skills, doesn't matter. Uh, her normal battle helmets just get more durability when they're worn specifically by Wigfrid. Cool. Uh, next is you can craft the commander helmet, which requires two golds, two beef wool, and one marble, which is relatively cheap. And it prevents knockback. But what's knockback? Don't worry, I'll show you. I'm going to show you with the new boss. But you might think, but Jakey, uh, wait, hold on. But Jakey, what's knockback? You might be asking, and I'll say, don't worry, I'll show you with the new boss that they added to this update as well. So you have to do, you have to go onto the ocean. This boss spawns anywhere in the deep ocean, although it does try to spawn uh, closer to the center of the map, but it still has to spawn in deep ocean. Thank you, Kotaru, in my Twitch chat for telling me how uh, the spawning mechanic works for this. It tries to look for the center of the map. And then after you fish three uh, deep bass out of uh, the hole, oh, and now there's a shark. Um, so I'm gonna put on my normal helmet, which does not have knockback resistance, and this guy is wet, so I'm gonna be doing mad damage. And you're gonna be a true Wigfred main and hold F. And so what just happened right there, that was knockback. That last swipe knocked me back. So what if I put the commander's helmet on? Oh, I don't get knocked back, but instead I just get kind of like pushed up into the air for a little bit. So you have a significantly shorter throwback animation. You don't get as destroyed. So, oh, here comes a knockback. Oh, I just get pushed up into the air for a brief second. A significantly less devastating animation. Oh, and also you can see the spear in action here. I just completely dodged one of his attacks because I teleported. Bam, that's the that's the new boss. I'm not talking about the boss and the mechanics, though you can draw some conclusions from just watching that. Anyway, and then uh, once you do that, you can give him some fishies, and then he gives you boots, and you can use the boots to do some teleporting. So if you hypothetically had a boat, which I do, because I just cheated to craft one, wow. You then throw your boot, and you say, I want to teleport over here, because I miss Mr. Mitha. You throw your boot, and then you start paddling. Anyone can join. And then you get teleported, then you crash your boat, because it throws you out at a lot with a bit of velocity. Uh, so yeah. Uh, and if you want to teleport back, don't worry about it. Uh, just go back through the whirlpool. Also, doesn't the whirlpool last for like a certain amount of time now? Or am I wrong? Is it a certain amount of, uh... Do you need to kill it to trade? You need to kill it and then you can trade with it. Yes, correct. Thank you, Capito, for your question. Good question. Anyway, so for every fish you trade him, he'll give you a boot which can teleport you like this, but it doesn't last forever. So it looks like the whirlpool stays around for just half a day, which is interesting. You saw that I gave Sharky Boy uh, three fish for three boots. Um, you are Once you kill him and you defeat him, you're limited to five trades. If you give him normal fish, he gives you one boot per fish. If you give him heavy fish, he gives you two boots per fish, which means per kill you can get a max of ten boots if you feed him all heavy fish. Uh, but heavy fish is an interesting way to fish. Anyway, that's the boss. Cool. And we've talked about the helmet for knockback. Cool. We're gonna chill here with Larry Lemons. That's his name. Wow, very cool, Lammy Lemons. Larry, Larry Lemons. Five trades total or five trades per person? I think it's five trades total. Uh, quick, someone try to trade with him. There you go. There's some fishies. Yeah, so it's five. It's five trades total, not five trades. Oh wait, would the? Oh yeah, no, I've done. Th I've done three trades, right? So now that's five trades now. Yeah, okay, so it's five trades total. We've done five trades now in total. It's not like five trades per person or anything. It is five trades in total in per kill. Good question, name shifter. All right, now that we've talked about the boss and the helmet, let's move on. So next is the commander's helmet. Now ha protect has, the commander's helm now has. Pra the commander's helm now has protection against power damage. Wow, I messed up so many times trying to read that. Uh, this is very simply, you get plus eight. This this helmet now gives plus eight planar defense. And, and that's it. Thanks, Kotaro, for verifying that yesterday. Now, onto the next girl. Wigfrid's natural healing ability will repair her commander's helmet when she continues to fight the maximum health. This is cool, and we have some clarity from the forums that someone pointed out to me yesterday. Oh, they're about my ship. I've stole your sawhorse. I'm stealing your whirlpool. I'm going in the whirlpool. Goodbye. Wigfrid's natural healing ability will repair her commander's helmet when she continues to fight at maximum health. Okay, so what this does is, um, basically there's a complicated formula to make you regenerate health. Oh my goodness, is that cat person TV? No way! Hello, cat person television. Sadly, so see, I regenerated full health by killing that cat coon. Cool. So now that I'm full health, uh, if I hit the spider, the commander helmet- Oh, the durability's going up. Wow! 
Uh, and what basically is for every health, for every one health that you would have regenerated to your health, 3.5 durability goes to the helmet. Not 3.5%, 3.5 health goes to the helmet. Um, so yeah, it's pretty good. It just repairs the helmet, more so than it would repair your health. Cool. In the main video, I'll compare this with the Dreadstone helmet a lot more, because they are very similar in that they're just helmets that get self-repair. But otherwise, yeah, Dreadstone helmet is technically better. It gives more damage reduction, because this is still only 80% damage reduction, which is the same as the default uh, Wigfrid helmet. Just that this one gives a... Uh, Knockback resistance. Uh, so next we're gonna do Rider right before we do the shield. All right, so this is beef flows will be domesticated 15% faster. I haven't looked into in what way it actually does this, whether it makes the, the domestication ticks with beef flow happen faster or you get more domestication points. Either way, yeah, you domesticate a beef flow faster. Cool. Um, if you like beef flow, go for it. This one allows you to ride beef flow for 30% longer. This kind of sucks because you already get to ride beef flow for really long. So this is kind of whatever. This is riding a beef flow will make your inspiration slowly rise until it reaches the half way mark. This is actually kind of decent. So you, you, you're Wigfred, you've got an ornery beefalo because you don't want to fight yourself for some reason and your inspiration just slowly creeps up just while you're on the beefalo. But yeah, so it does tick up very slowly but it does tick up and again, I'll talk about the numbers in the main channel video because I'm not going in depth here. Wow, a top hat for me! <gasps> is this where Banjo perished last video? Goodness gracious. Does the inspiration work for riders too? Yeah, yeah, it works for any beefalo. It's just like while you're riding a beefalo. It doesn't even have to be tamed and it would still go up. But the one thing about this that's interesting is if you had full inspiration and then you hopped on your beefalo, um, suddenly your inspiration simply does not drain anymore uh, until you get off the beefalo, then it will start draining again. So it's like it's so while you're on the beefalo, it's like being in combat in that your inspiration will just stop draining. So my 100 inspiration is down, starting now to tick down until I hop on the beefalo and then it stops ticking down. So yeah, it just, you get, get to effectively store your inspiration if you use a beefalo between fights. So it's like, it's fine. It just means as soon as you hop into a fight, you can activate passive songs immediately. Decent, but like, whatever. Then lastly is I learn to craft a new beefalo saddle that protects your beefalo. Uh, okay, so the TLDR for this beefalo saddle is, um, it's bad. <laughs> uh, it's six azure feathers, three marble, four gold nuggets. It gives 30% speed bonus to your beefalo and gives 40% damage reduction. You might think, wow, speed bonus and damage reduction, cool. But the default saddle gives 40% 40, 40 speed bonus. And the Glossomer saddle gives like 55% speed bonus. The point is this war saddle uh, gives less speed bonus. This battle saddle gives less speed bonus than the default saddle. So the only thing you get is, um, oh wait, I'm in the way. Hmm. Don't worry guys, uh, me and the Twitch chat will move for the YouTube gamers. Me and the Twitch chat are moving just for you. So uh, the, th this saddle uh, sucks, it gives 30% speed bonus, um, but the default saddle gives 40% speed bonus. So like, you know what I'm saying? So next, let's talk about this. Uh, this just gives you plus five planner defense. Um, so now there's a good comparison here. Do you get this or this? This gives plus eight planner defense, um, but technically, so this gives you more defense, but that plus eight planar defense means it will eat into the helmet's durability more, whereas this plus five planar defense applies to Wigfrid. So if you get hit, for example, 100 planar damage, the helmet would eat eight of that planar damage, and then 92 would hit you, and then Wigfrid would reduce that 92 down by 25%. But if you instead went for this, the helmet wouldn't eat any planar damage, Wigfrid would get rid of the five planar damage, and then would reduce the ni now 95 down by 25%. So uh, this is technically better if you're always using the helmet, but otherwise this, this is very good as well. It's like decent. Anyway, onto the shield. Next is the best part about the Wigfrid skill tree, in my humble opinion. So learn to craft the battle Hond. This shield can be used to attack, block attacks, and provide extra protection while equipped. Wow. Can you press the clear all button in the scrapbook? No! What do you- sorry. <laughs> uh, the battle run requires four gold nuggets and three beefalo wool, so pretty easy to make. Go to the ruins and kill a beefalo, and then you've got yourself the shield. So the shield does 51 damage, the same as a tentacle spike, uh, and it's craftable. So it's filling the hole, which is um, that, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> mid-game craftable weapons for, like, multiplayer. Except not really, because only Wigfrid can use this, right? No one else can equip this. Hey, 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 Walter. Try to pick up this shield, Walter. Try to- Walter. Walter, try to pick up the shield, Walter. Wal Willow, try to pick up the shield, Willow. You can't equip it, right? Gosh darn it. Yeah, so only Wigfrid can use the shield. Here, Willow, try to use the spear. Yeah, you can't. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I forgot to say, uh, 
uh, non Wigfrits can use uh, the normal spear, but not the charged spear. Okay, cool. Um, anyway, back to the shield. The shield is 51 damage, can only be used by Wigfrid, and has 85% damage reduction. Wow, cool. Only 420 durability, though, and you can attack with it. So, uh, you know, eh, not that good, but then, what's this? Kabam! You can block with it. And this block is amazing, because when you block attacks, um, it doesn't eat into the durability at all. So if you, um, so here, watch this. See this evil f looking frog? Let me attack the evil looking frog. Attack, block, attack. Wow, I'm amazing. Um, so the only thing that eats durability is if you, if you get hit while you're not blocking, so, I got hit while not blocking, and I'm losing durability. Wow, sad. And of course, when you attack, you also lose durability. So actually, that's a good comparison. Battle Rond is 85% damage reduction and has the ability to block. The Shield of Terror is 80% damage reduction, can't, cannot block, but can also be recharged. You can block multiple hits, indeed, we will get to that very soon. And so, with just the one skill unlocked, you can, with one shield, uh, infinitely block a boss like Dragonfly. So what's up, Dragonfly? Oh, you've been blocked. You see that? I blocked the last second. The cooldown is just fast enough so that you can constantly block Dragonfly. And it's really funny. It's like really, it's really satisfying to block boss attacks. Like it's really satisfying. Oh, I missed the block and my shield broken. So your shield breaks really fast because it has such low durability if you actually take a hit with it. So yeah, uh, the shield is cool. So the shield only does 51 damage, which is as good as a tentacle spike, but um, you do save a little bit of time in that, uh, oh yeah, block. Uh oh. Um, because you're blocking, you're attacking up to the, like the few frames before you're getting hit, which means you can, you don't have to kite, which means you get more hits in, which means you do more damage. Um, so it's probably equivalent to like a hand bat in DPS wise, depends on what you're fighting because you don't have to kite as much. Like with Dragonfly, you can get seven to eight hits in rather than six to seven because you don't have to kite, you just have to block. Oh yeah, and one thing I forgot to mention, Kronos Reformed just asked, would you just uh, unequip the shield and use a hand bat? Thing is, when you equip the shield, it goes on a quick cooldown. So you can't just quickly swap to it and then block and then swap out. It goes on like a quick um, two second cooldown when you equip it. Um, yeah, so you can't switch between it and a hand bat, or you can, but you have to proactively equip the shield to be able to use the block function. Five, six, seven, eight. I did eight hits. You're bad at the game. <laughs> I win. Jakey wins again. Yeah, you can do eight hits. Cool. It's my birthday. Happy birthday! But we are not done with the shield yet because the next one is the duration of the ba battle Ron's ability to block attacks will be increased. And it's increased quite significantly so that if you are attacked by a wild Mermblender 2000, uh, 3000, my mistake. Um, oh, goodness. Oh, uh. <laughs> I tried to block and I messed up. The queue is full. <laughs> yes, let's go chunky and kill them all. Oh. Sorry. Hey, do the spin attack. Yeah, you can switch between the uh You can you can switch between the improved spear and the shield. Oh my goodness, Celestial Champion's here. Oh no, block! Uh, so you get to block the entire attack, which is very satisfying. So yeah, the duration is increased so that if you mess up and you block way too early, you might still be able to block the hit. Because there's one big mechanic that I didn't mention yet, which is if you block, but you don't get hit by anything, this is what happens. Uh, so I'm gonna block this and I get hit. So, you, did you see that? The the cooldown on the shield went down a lot. But if I block, oh, I'm gonna block the Celestial Champion's attack. Block! Oh wait, it didn't hit me. Oh no, my cooldown is massive. So now I can't block the next attack because I blocked incorrectly. So yeah, if you block and then you get hit, your cooldown gets reduced a ton, which means you can block the next attack probably. Uh, we we got a we got a good suggestion from someone in the chat and said, can't you switch between the improved spear and the shield? That is true. You can switch between the spear and the shield. Um, you just have to switch to the shield a little bit earlier because, like I said, it has that 1.5 second cooldown when you switch into it. And also, you don't want to cancel one of your own attacks like before you actually land the hit. Otherwise, you're doing less DPS. But anyway, you do an attack every about half second. So he's gonna do blender attack. So you do that. You block Kabam. He's gonna do an attack almost immediately. And I can switch into this. But as you just saw, I just blocked one of my attacks when I switched into the sh the spear. Block and then you switch out again. 
then you switch back to the shield. So you have to get the timing right, and it, it that that pattern of switching between the shield and the spear will change depending on the boss. Like Dragonfly will be quite simple because it's his attack comes at the same time all the time. Uh, but with like some bosses, their attacks are a bit more variation. And it just adds more room for error. Because another thing with the spear is you can just teleport away. Once you start the casting animation for the teleport, it, you can't get cancelled out of it. You, you It will go through as long as you start it. Um, and lots of people were telling me initially when this, when this beta first happened, is that the spear has iframes. No, it doesn't. The spear does not have iframes. Anyone who told you has iframes, they were lying to you. I should mention, what are iframes? Iframes are invulnerability frames which are frames where you cannot get hit. So with Wartox's teleport, there are a few frames where his body actually disappears and he cannot get hit. But this, you do not disappear. You start, you go from one location and then you appear in another one. So your hitbox never disappears, you simply teleport. Um, so yeah, you can use the spear to kite some bosses, but some bosses it doesn't really work that well. Um, so yeah, I think the shield is great because you can block with it. But we're not done with the shield yet, no no. I love pineapple on pizza. Miso, thanks for the subscramble. Miso happy that Miso subscrambled. Wow! So the next shield skill is called Battle Rond Enhancement 2. Wow, very cool. After blocking an attack with the Battle Rond, your next attack within 5 seconds will deal 15 to 30 damage based on the damage blocked. So what this is meant to imitate is a perfect parry, in that once if you block something, you deal a little bit extra damage back, which is cool. So it increases the shield's damage ever so slightly more. Oh, let's use Dragonfly as an example. Dragonfly, you do eight attacks, then block, then you do eight, uh, eight attacks, then block, etc. Right? If your Dragonfly hit you, you deal the full 30 extra damage back because of Dragonfly's damage. Everyone, give me your money now! Oh no! Anime Kurgaya has just hacked their parents' Amazon Prime account and just gave me five subscribers! That was gross. I'm so sorry. It will happen again. Celestial Chonkin has returned. Uh, so, oh no! Block, 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 block! Punch. I did 101 damage. Isn't that cool? So, uh, what's my default damage without blocking against Cecil Champion? Let's take a look. So, my buff damage was 101, and then it's 63. Now, you might think, but Jakey, that's like 37 extra damage. You might think, but Jakey, 37 is more than 30. You're a smart one. Because uh, that works out because um, the 30 damage I'm getting is being buffed by Wigfrid's damage multipliers being 1.25. Um, so I'm doing extra damage. So there, this extra damage is uh, gets benefits from all of your damage multipliers. Now, realistically, this doesn't, doesn't add too much damage. So if we were fighting Dragonfly, you do eight hits, then you block. Then you would do this extra bonus damage hit, right? Um, so if you got the full damage hit, so I'm dealing 37 more damage. My Windows key isn't working anymore. That makes me sad. How am I meant to open up my calculator now? You're doing 4.75, about 4 damage more per hit on average because of this. Which is not too much. It is like an 8% damage increase overall. 8% DPS increase. Decent, as long as you block and you don't mess up. Now you might think, but Jakey, how does it determine the 15 to 30 damage based on the damage blocked? So how it determines the 15 to 30 bonus damage is it takes however much damage the boss tried to do to you, so if you were getting hit by Dragonfly, Dragonfly does 75 damage. Yeah, 75 when it's enraged it does 150. So Dragonfly does 75 damage, right? Uh, in the code, how it calculates this is it takes the damage you should have taken, it cuts it in half, and then maxes it and caps it at 30. So if Dragonfly hits you for 75, it cuts it in half, and so it goes to 37.5. But you can't do 37.5 bonus damage, you do 30 damage. So it goes, it gets rounded down, or it get caps out at 30. Then your damage multiplies, multiply the 30 up to whatever it multiplies up to. Uh, so that's how it determines the bonus damage. As long as you're getting hit for 60 damage, you always get the 30 bonus damage. And even if you get hit for 1 damage, you always get, you always get the minimum of 15 bonus damage. So that's the shield. The shield is my favorite part of Wigfrid's skill tree because it's funny. Haha. -ha. Shield funny. Epic block. Hiya. Oh, yeah. And also it's very responsive and I love it. It's very quick to block. You just have to, you can right, you just right click to activate the option to block and then you -ya, block. It's so fast. Oh yeah. So I'm, I'm like, I, I like the shield. I think it's really cool, but it, it's still better DPS to just like, just, just use the hand bet. <laughs> I'm saying all this, but like it is better DPS just to use a hand bet. So it's not broken or busted or anything. It's just nice and cheap and, it, and the blocking is funny because it means you don't have to kite bosses most of the time. You can just block, which is just funny. And so especially if you have dark swords or, or even your new spear, that's significantly better than the shield. All right, then lastly, we have the affiliation skills. Now what these do is let's just 
go on the shadow one. By the way, you should, you should choose the shadow one because I'll explain later. That unlocks the affiliation song of whatever you affiliated with. And it requires three pure horror or three pure brilliance to craft. So it's kind of expensive. No, it, oh, I should probably, good question, RFSMGG. Um, when you block, it only blocks you from taking damage. So if the Merm Blender arrives, and it's about to kill everyone. That's a shame. Wigfrid doesn't care. Wigfrid blocks it for you, but it doesn't block it for everybody else. Anyway, Dark Lament. You sing Dark Laments, and now uh, all your friends around you uh, will now deal extra damage to lunar enemies and have defense against shadow enemies. And what those numbers are is you get 5% damage buff, so now I should punch for... I'm punching for 30... Uh, 14. There you go. That makes more sense. So that's 1.25 multiplied by 1.1, multiplied by 1.05. 5% damage against lunar aligned enemies and 10% defense against shadow aligned enemies. And the opposite is true for the lunar melodist. And you also, of course, with the affinity skill, you get a hidden 10% damage buff against lunar enemies with the shadow and 10% uh, shadow defense with the shadow affinity and opposite for the lunar. Uh, that is hidden and doesn't actually get stated here, but that is hidden for every affinity. So that's what the song does and that's it. That's all of Wigfrid's stuff. We've covered all of it. For Wigfrid's skill tree, you're looking at it. This is what I would use. Actually, that's a lie. Sorry, I made a mistake. Yeah, like I think this is what I would do. If you're not in multiplayer, then this song is useless because you can't revive yourself with it. So you just pick Mystic Resilience instead. As for Shadow versus Luna, I would advocate Shadow because where you use these songs is in boss fights because that's where you get loads of inspiration and the boss fight actually lasts for a long time and currently right now the lunar bosses have a higher health pool than the shadow bosses so you can greater utilize the shadow affinity than the lunar affinity but it's up to you it's not really a big deal all right now let's switch to willow at the start of the video did i even say that i was doing willow willow has probably got my favorite skill tree in the game now controlled burning fires you set won't spread and burnable loot will just smolder items like torches and willow's light have a hundred percent chance to ignite targets uh this does exactly what it says so i don't need to show you anything that you kill while it's on fire normally any drop that could be set on fire would be burnt to ash before it dropped but now it will just smolder instead of burning to ash so you, you don't lose the drop burn duration creatures burn for a long time again i don't need to show it to you creatures simply burn for a long time i believe it's 30, it's 30 seconds it goes from like 10 seconds to 30 seconds it's very significant next is that your fire deal more damage to creatures over time again it's simple it just does more damage to creatures over time while they're on fire uh, the only significant thing to note is that if you set a spider on fire without this skill the spider doesn't die it almost dies but it doesn't but with this skill the spider does die which is significant for later so next are brighter lighter one and two which just make your lighter brighter imagine that uh brighter lighter two makes it almost as good as a lantern but you're gonna be tight for skill points with willow's skill tree so do not spend it on these because you have something better to spend it on. Next is Hungry Lighter. Stop things from burning by absorbing the flame even when they're the only thing smoldering with your lighter. This kind of doesn't matter, but it's like a free way to stop things from smoldering. If Walter just set fire to your base's favorite tree, oh no, just absorb the fire to stop it from burning. So it's pretty cool. And it has a decent radius. Like, see, oh no, these trees are on fire. Oh no, suck. You just suck up all the fires. Cool. Next is collect and use embers to perform pyrokinetic effects. You can collect embers from burned creatures with your lighter. Use embers to fuel, refuel the lighter. All right, so this unlocks an entire mechanic, which is very cool, which is, say you have a pig man. His, his name is Olive, except it's Banjo's cousin. You set Olive on fire, and now you, you kill Olive with your cheating mode of turning on one-hit kill mode. Oh, and because it died while it was on fire, it drops an ember soul, or an ember. I forgot what they're called. Then you absorb it with your lighter, yum yum yum, and you pick it up. You have to pick it up with your lighter by absorbing. It's called eth ethereal embers. <sighs> and then when you use it, by default, you have one spell called flame cast, which casts a flame. Imagine that. And it will set things on fire in the air of effect. So yeah, pretty cool. And you can absorb that fire with your lighter. For the sake of testing, I'm going to give myself a bunch of embers. Um, you can also use these embers to refuel your lighter. It's the only way to refuel your lighter. Otherwise, you have to craft a new lighter every time it depletes. Now, what can we use these embers for? For now, you can only do this, but then there's some skills. So first of all is spontaneous combustion. Use embers to ignite creatures in an area around you. We have a hundred spiders, what are we gonna do? We're gonna use combustion, of course. And uh, now they're all cooking. I'm gonna turn on damage display. And as you can see, some of them are dying because they're taking lots of fire damage from the spiders around them. But otherwise, some spiders won't die because one cast of combustion isn't quite enough to actually kill a spider. But, like I said, if you had this skill, it would be enough to kill a spider. And then, because all these spiders died while they were, they were on fire, you can then just suck up all of the embers. And so, uh, if you didn't guess already, this is how you'll be farming all of your embers. 
uh, you'll be having some spider nests near your base and then you'll set the spiders on fire using combustion and then you pick up all the souls once you're done. Next is Fireball War. Um, I really like this and think it's gonna be useful or used a lot by newer players because what it does is you cast it and it's basically a Star Caller Staff. It is the Star Caller Staff, except it lasts for eight minutes. Star Caller Staff lasts for two and a half days or something. But yeah, so th that's what it is. And you can cook on it, everything that a Star Caller Staff does. And let's make it nighttime. So as you can see, it's nighttime. That's a big radius. It's like, almost like it's a Star Caller Staff. Yeah, Fireball is good. And it's very cheap and has a really quick animation. So if you're in the ruins, I think would be really nice. Bam. And it also counts as sunlight for farming. Thank you, Leg. Uh, mechanically, if you're like a hardcore player, you probably won't want to spend the skill point on Fireball, but I just think it's so convenient and such a nice quality of life skill. But you, you later on, you will have to you will have to decide between Fireball and another skill. Does it spread fire? I believe so, like a Starcaller Staff. Yeah, it does. Can it go spout out the fire? Good question. Uh, Wanda, haunt that, haunt that thing. Oh, look at that. If you haunt it, it gets rid of it. Good question. Um, camp for proper nickel. It can indeed be put out with a haunt. So if you're a new player, get fireball. If you don't really care for it, then go, don't get it. Burning Frenzy is one which I think people think uh, is pretty skippable. It is pretty skippable, but it, it's also very simple. So what it does is while something's on fire, you can cast this. I do. 250 damage because I have one hit kill mode on. <laughs> uh, now I do 34 damage. But what if, what if I combustion to set him on fire and then I use Burning Frenzy to give myself the buff and now I touch the pig. Now I do 42.5 damage. So yeah, because the pig is on fire, my damage gets multiplied by 1.25. 25% damage multiplier is pretty strong, also paired with the fact that you can light things on fire for like 30 seconds with this skill. What bosses can be set on fire? Good question, and I will be answering that in the main channel video, so I'll have to actually go and check. The only downside to Burning Frenzy is that, one, you have to waste a hit with your lighter to set them on fire, or you have to use combustion, but that costs souls, to then get 25% damage. As long as the enemy is going to take four or five hits or more to die anyway, then setting it on fire is worth it. Yes, it does work on beef loaf. There is a substantial amount of the boss pool that simply cannot be lit on fire, which means you cannot use Burning Frenzy. Or if you do, you don't get the damage bonus. But against, like, you know, bishops in the ruins, you set them on fire anyway, so you just kill them a little bit faster. So th I think this is skippable, but it's theoretically pretty good because it's just a 25% damage bonus. If something's on fire and you attack it with Willow, like, you do as much damage as Wigfrid. But remember, the thing in question needs to be on fire and you need to cast Burning Frenzy and then it lasts for 60 seconds. You can see by that little circle surrounding me right there. That means Burning Frenzy is active. Anyway, so that's all of those skills. Cool, now let's move on to Bernie, don't worry, there are a few more um, Ember skills that we'll learn later. Bernie does not activate until you go insane. So 30% sanity, not quite insane. So once you hit 15% or below uh, max uh, sanity, then kabam, you're insane and now Bernie will activate. Cool. Bernie by default has 2,000 health and is, does 50 damage. So if there's a terror beak, oh no. Uh, oh, Bernie got hit for 50 and Bernie hits it back for 50 when he punches it. Wow, cool. And also whenever Bernie slaps his head like that, he reacts throws everything around him. So he taunts everything, so he'll take the hits for Willow. Um, but then, and also I accidentally did it there. If you calm Bernie, it makes him back into small Bernie um, until you go insane again, and then he uh, comes back out. But this is a new feature for Bernie where you can calm him. So you can calm him to then pick him up and then run away, for example. Because before, if you let him stay active, then you ran away. Uh, he might not be able to catch up to you, and then he would deactivate and stay there on the floor where you couldn't find him. Alright, so this one is Bernie's health regenerates slowly. So, with level 1, it makes it so that Bernie regenerates half a health every one second. So, one health every two seconds, effectively. Except not, it's half a health every one second. So, oh no, Bernie's about to take damage. Oh, he regenerated every half a health every second. And then level 2 just makes it so he regenerates one health every second. Um, so yeah, pretty decent. And he regenerates in and out of combat. Yeah, so it's yeah, it's just one health regen per second. Pretty good. Health regeneration is very strong in Don't Starve. Um, because otherwise, if Bernie died, hiya! Bernie now dead. And you pick him up. Oh no, 0% durability. Um, the only way to fix him is with the sewing kit, which honestly isn't even that expensive. But regeneration just means he'll stay he'll stay out on the field for longer. 
and you don't have to repair them as often. And this one is, uh, what Bernie becomes active at a higher th sanity threshold, and this one is an even higher sanity threshold. You will unlock these. You will unlock these. Because this just makes it so that Bernie is active more often. As long as your sanity is below 50%, then Bernie will activate. So right now, my sanity is at 50%, so he does not activate. But if I go to 49% sanity, suddenly... He activates. Uh, yeah, so it just makes it, it just means that you don't have to actually be insane for Bernie to be active. So a very good skill, you will be using this. The next is Hot Headed. Now this one is interesting and has gone through a lot of changes, but it's pretty good. It says Bernie will activate to fight hostile lunar and shadow aligned creatures regardless of Willow's sanity, which is interesting. So even if I am not insane at all, Bernie is staying active because there's a shadow creature. And because the shadow creature is there, you can't see it because it's, I am not insane, but Bernie can see it because he is insane. Um, he will stay activated to kill the shadow creature and then he'll deactivate again. So now he deactivates because there's nothing around to attack. And, and I'm not insane, so there's no reason for him to be active. This is useful for a boss such as Celestial Champion, where usually it's pretty hard to stay insane while fighting Celestial Champion. So Bernie just immediately activates because Celestial Champion is nearby. And he just taunted Celestial Champion and now he's attacking Celestial Champion. Um, so Hot-Headed is like quite good. It just makes Bernie more aggressive. There was also a bug that you can watch in my last um, stream on the channel, which is where you could activate, like one one Willow could activate hundreds and hundreds of Bernies with Hot Headed active, because it bypassed a few checks when Bernie activates. So <laughs> you could activate hundreds of Bernies per Willow, which is really funny. Um, but they patched that, so you can't do it anymore. Next is Bernie's total health is higher, which is 300 more max health, and then it's higher again, so now he has 600 max health. 300 and 600 max health might not sound like a lot, but the next few skills will make that a lot more impactful. Next, uh, then there's these two skills, which is Bernie's movement speed is a little faster and much faster. It's garbage. You don't need it. Uh, this is a waste of skill points. Don't do it. And then we have Burning Bernie. Burning Bernie requires eight Bernie skills unlocked to unlock Burning Bernie. These two affinity skills do not count towards that uh, uh, Bernie skill count. So I currently have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I need to unlock one of the speed uh, perks to unlock Burning Bernie. And what Burning Bernie does is if you ignite Bernie by either using combustion or just by lighting him on fire with your with your uh, lighter, he will gain a fiery aura. And whenever anything attacks him, it will deal damage back to whatever attacked him. 50 damage to be exact. So if I go insane, I can light him on fire and he gets a burning aura. Wow, isn't that cool? And oh no, there's two terrible beaks help Bernie and every time so Bernie deals 50 damage and whenever they hit Bernie Bernie deals 50 damage back um, without attacking oh his fire ran out let's start again he stays on fire for 20 seconds verified very cool so if you watch you can see the damage going out every time Bernie gets hit by something uh, it instantly deals 50 damage back which is very cool which just means um, if he gets swarmed by something like Splamonkeys or something then he will absolutely destroy them because they deal get dealt a lot of damage back let's test him on a bunch of spiders Bernie help there's a bajillion spiders kill them Bernie uh oh he punched a spider and now he's hitting all of the spiders back oh no Bernie died he took too much damage um, so that's what Bernie and Bernie does it's very powerful um, it was even more powerful when you could have hundreds of Bernies at one time uh, if if you go watch the last live stream, like I said, that there, uh, there was a bit where um, whenever Celestial Champion Phase Two would do the spilling attack, every Bernie he hit it dealt 50 damage back, and there was like 100 Bernies around Celestial Champion, so it would take thousands of damage in seconds. It was very cool. Burning Bernies very much. If you're relying on Bernie, then this is really good. But um, we'll see later that basically you can't have um, Burning Bernie and some of th these two flame affiliation skills. So next, still on Bernie, is the affinity skills for Bernie. Now, this is the biggest buff for Bernie because what actually happens here is, it, well, it says, if we look at the lunar affinity, it says, in, entreat the moon to strengthen Bernie's planar attack and defense, particularly against shadow enemies. So what this actually does is, it gives Bernie plus five flat planar attack. Okay, cool. So he deals 55 damage now, 50 physical and five planar. He gains planar defense, which is true. He gets 15 planar defense. But one thing that it doesn't tell you is that Bernie becomes a planar entity. And what that means is uh, he gets a, a big chunky physical damage reduction. So you know how Terabeaks used to do 50 damage to Bernie? 
Wow, that that's that, that's new Bernie. So let's spawn a Terror Beak. This used to do 50 damage against Bernie. Now let's see what it does. Oh, only 33 damage. And that's because, um, Planar defense garbage. You know what? I'll open up my Planar spreadsheet. All right, here you go. Here's my Planar gaming spreadsheet. Isn't it cool? All right, so, uh, Bernie is getting hit for 50 physical damage here. And you run that through the formula, which is this up here. Here you go. I'll just show you that. Bam, there's the formula. Um... So it gets re so by running it through that formula, it gets reduced down to 33. So if Bernie got hit for 500 physical damage, it would get reduced down to 149. So uh, yeah, he's really tanky now. And most of the time he's gonna be getting hit by shadow creatures, which will be about 50 damage or crawling horrors, I believe a 33 damage or something. TLDR is he's gonna take like at least 12% less damage from everything. And the more damage he gets dealt, the more it gets decreased as you can see. Um, so basically, that one affinity skill makes Bernie, like, roughly, depends what you're fighting, but it makes him about 30% tankier. He will live for 30% longer because of his defense. He also gets the flat planar defense against planar enemies. Yes, I only got hit by 62 damage. So he gets the planar defense and it reduces any physical uh, damage. So yeah, so Bernie's really tanky now. But there's also another little hidden mechanic there, which wasn't in the beta, it was broken in the beta. But now you can see that Bernie was doing 60.5 damage versus the shadow creatures. Bernie, help! It's an evil tool bird. So you can see Bernie's doing 55 damage against this tool bird. So 50 physical, 5 planar. But then against a the shadow creature, what happens? Um, yeah, so but Bernie... Uh, benefits from the hidden 10% damage buff from the affinity. So, um, once Bernie is done killing that tool bird, hiya. Hiya. He will now do 60.5 damage because he's doing 50 damage plus the 5 planar damage, then multiply that by 1.1 and 55 multiplied 1.1 is 60.5. So he does 60.5 damage versus uh, shadow creatures. He also takes 10% less damage from lunar aligned enemies. What made you want to make the character guides? <laughs> because I made a I made a three hour guide for every character and then Clay was like, oh nice video man. Anyway, so I'm gonna give everyone a skill tree. <laughs> <laughs> so now let's switch to the shadow affinity just to show what Bernie looks like uh, and that's what shadow Bernie looks like now because shadow Bernie is shadow Bernie He doesn't get the bonus damage versus nightmare creatures, but he does he gets it versus uh, lunar creatures of course, but he should only get hit by uh, Less than 33. Yeah, so as you can see 30.5 So the shadow creature tries to hit for 50 But the damage gets reduced to 45 because you know Bernie is shadow Bernie and that reduces and then it hit, gets hit by the planner entity Defense and that reduces it down to 30.5. So that's why he's going to get hit by 30.5 So he does get extra defense against shadow creatures with shadow Bernie. He's gonna give everyone free stuff Whoa, is that shadow Ashley? Uh, before we move on to the next skill I'm just gonna show really quickly that you can in fact you can have a planner burn with burning Bernie at the same time while still having some of these skills So you'd have like this would be your skill tree if you were fully investing into Bernie So now Bernie is really tanky and does damage back whenever anything hits them So and also the fire looks different with the different affinities burning on fire You can't really see it because I'm insane, but uh, he gets a lunar fire around him So you can kind of see it's kind of hard to see I'm not gonna lie because it's lunar alignment But like yeah, there it is and then set, set him on fire Oh yeah, the the shadow flames looks like way better. Burning Bernie? No, it's physical. I'm pretty sure it's physical. I don't think it's doing recoil damage back. Oh, there we go. Was, how much recoil damage happened there? Yeah, so it's, it's all physical. Um, all right, so that's that's all of Bernie stuff. Bernie is really good. The best skill he has is this one because it makes him so much tankier because he, because he becomes a planner entity. Um, now I saved the best till last. My favorite part. So we want to now unlock Lunar Fire Razor and Shadow Fire Razor. This requires seven lighter skills. So those lighter skills, they're up to you, but I would do this. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and now you just need one more. So you choose between Firefighter, so you can use Combustion to kill spiders in one Combustion, um, or you can do Fireball. Let's do Fireball this time. And now you unlock, we'll start with Lunar Fire Razor. Lunar Fire Razor does 15 hits. Each hit deals 30 planar and 20 physical. That's a lot of hits, Jakey, but what does it look like? And so here's what, uh, here's what it is. You open this, Lunar Flame, it costs five embers, kabam. So there you go, 30 planar, 20 physical, 
uh, 15 hits, so 750 total damage, but it's area of effect. So it hits everything in the direction that you fire your flames, and you can move the direction by moving Willow. Although you can aim the initial cast wherever you want, um, but unfortunately there is a cooldown. So once you finish the Lunar Flame cast, it has an 8 second cooldown, but it technically actually has a 13 second cooldown. The cooldown starts as soon as you cast it, and as you can see, there it is. So yeah, it has a 13 second cooldown from the initial cast, so you can't spam cast it. So if if you uh, are you against one target, um, this is only 10% better DPS than a Dark Sword. So like d doing that is only 10% better. That took five seconds. Whereas if I just held F with a Dark Sword, um, this is 136 DPS. Whereas this is 150 DPS. So it's not much better than a Dark Sword and you can't spam it. Um, but of course, if you're attacking lots of targets, then the DPS goes up more and more and more. Fez Station, goodness gracious, someone should sort this. Don't worry guys, what's up guys? It's your boy, Willow. Dying to a bunch of spiders again. I bit off more than I can chew. Uh, so yeah, you do get left kind of vulnerable because you do have to channel, you do have to channel the flames. What cancels the Lunar Flame channeling animation? Um, a couple of things. One, if you get knocked back, and two, if your armor breaks. So, what's up, guys? It's your boy, Daywalker. Back at it again, doing some gaming. Oh, I got knocked back. Oh, I got knocked back again. So, if I cast... Oh, I got knocked back. So, it got cancelled. And it's on cooldown. Blast! And so, you can see, now I'm not doing 50 damage. I'm doing 60.5! That's because, um, because I have the Lunar Affinity versus a Shadow Enemy, I do 10% damage, and the Lunar Flames count as like a Lunar Weapon, or like a Lunar Attack, so you get 10% damage because you're fighting a Shadow Enemy again, so I'm doing 50 multiplied by 1.1, multiplied by 1.1, that's why I'm doing 60.5 damage rather than 50. And those damage multipliers are true multipliers, and they're even buffing the, uh, the planner aspect of the flames. So you see I got knocked back and it got cancelled. Can you aim with mouse? You cannot unfortunately. I mean you technically can. So if, if you aim if you just walk at towards your mouse then you can aim it. So like you technically can aim with the mouse, you just have to hold down and walk. Because that is a way you can walk. You just hold down left click and just move your mouse around. What's up guys? It's your boy Piggy Muck Pig Pig. Gonna get blasted. Oh he broke my armor and therefore cancelled my channeling of Lunar Flames. How rude. Wherever you're aiming. So like, walk to- Oh, and that's another way you can cancel it. If you accidentally attack something like I just did there, um, it cancels the channel. <laughs> so if you do your attack animation like you hold F or you click on an enemy, then um, yeah. What about the Shadow Flames? Well, it has the same requirement of seven lighter skills, so I have to unlock those real quick. The damage bonuses you get from the affinity skills, they're like, they get applied to your planner and your physical damage. Whereas something like Electric Volt Goat Jelly, those, that damage bonus only gets applied to physical damage. So this is what the Shadow Fire does. It throws five flames out in a triangle, oh, not a triangle, in a star pad, <laughs> in five different points around you, and you can aim the points and it has an 8 second cooldown. But the difference is, um, there's two main differences, or three I guess. With Lunar Flames, you have to channel the fire, you have to channel it. You have to sit there in an animation and channel the fire, otherwise you don't do damage. With the Shadow Fire, you cast it and then you keep doing whatever you're doing. And those Shadow Fires deal 100 damage each, and they will home in on whatever you're fighting. At least they will try to. So right here, I cast it right next to the Were Pig, and two of them- oh! Four out of five of them hit, and one of them ran off in the other direction. So most of the time, at least one of them will miss. But, and yeah, that's the uh, second big thing, is that it homes in on stuff. So it's an instant cast, and it homes in on whatever, so you don't actually need to um, aim it. And then, lastly, is the cooldown. The cooldown for this is 8 seconds, whereas Lunar Flames is 13 seconds, but because you channel the Lunar Flames for 5 seconds, it ten like by the time you're done channeling the Lunar Flames, it's then on an 8 second cooldown, so it's like kind of the same, but not really. And lastly, this is like 4 points, oops, I can't count. <laughs> lastly, Shadowfire does 100 damage, I th believe it's 60 planar and 40 physical, um, and so against that enemy it's doing 104 damage because, again, it counts as a shadow attack or a shadow weapon attack, so you get 10% damage bonus against lunar enemies, and I've also got the affiliation, so I also get 10% damage again because of that. I think a good way of thinking about this spell is it's just a it's just a quick spike in DPS. Uh, so yeah, the shadow fire is not area of effect. It will only hit one target, so it will do a maximum amount of damage. It, it cannot do more than 5 hits. 
So this is a lunar aligned enemy with no power defense and I do 121 per shadow tendril. So against the pigmen, 100 damage. It will never do more than 100 damage, it will never do less, unless the pigmen has less than 100 health then it will. But yeah, point is, uh, without any damage bonuses, it does 500 damage max. But yeah, it's just, it's just a cool damage spike, you just BAM! With like a less than one second casting animation, you just do 500 damage, which is really good just burst of damage. Any questions, Twitch chatters? Any questions? Oh, do you mean like they do they penetrate like walls? Good question. So I have meat in my inventory and a bunny man in the cage. He will get angry at me. Then I will use my shadow fire. Will it pierce the walls? It will. Look at that. I don't think it cares about walls. Yeah, you can see that one. It just traveled right through the wall. So yeah, it doesn't care about walls. It will just go through them. Wait, the lunar fire doesn't damage walls anymore? That's huge. Wait, what? Since when? That's huge. That makes fire farms with her lunar flame skill way easier. Um, so last thing to talk about. This is what I'll talk about in the Willow actual full video. But uh, lunar flames has a very good utility in that, you know, my fire farm video that I made like a year ago. You can do that farm without the complicated setup, and all you need to do is use the lunar, use the lunar flames instead of like the fire farm setup. That that's it. So all you need to do now is you need to just trap whatever you're killing into an enclosure, and then you just blast them with the lunar flames, and then you win. The maximum DPS potential of Willow holding F with a dark sword and or with Shadow Reaper and Void Cal, and then just using this occasionally is more DPS than like doing the same, but then using Lunar Fire Razor. Does Willow Shadow Fire work with the Void Cal? A good question. I imagine not, but let's find out. Wouldn't it be funny if it does? 104 damage. Now with the cowl. 104 damage. <laughs> so, uh, this is something that I knew of, but I didn't actually internalize till just now. Um, every time one of your flames hits something, it triggers a gestalt from the, from the Celestial Champion crown. So, hypothetically. So, if you have Lunar Flames, which hits multiple times, lots of times. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have Celestial Champion's crown. <laughs> Look at all those gestalts activating. <laughs> That's so funny. So even oh the sanity it doesn't uh, the sanity song doesn't work with the lunar flame hits. So it's probably a good thing. And so people ask, uh, but it works with the Warbus armor. Uh, basically, problem with Warbus armor is what I said in my other video about it, which is just Celestial Champion Crown is just so much better for damage. Just so much better. Look at all these free gestalts we're getting. Like we activated so many gestalts that I think we activated 18 gestalts in that short amount of time. 18 gestalts, 42.5 damage per gestalt. So, you know, that's nearly, you know, 800 damage for free. Yeah, okay, last thing I guess is a recommended skill tree for Willow. Yeah, exactly. L like, Shadow Flames is boring, but better single target DPS, but Lunar Flames has actual utility, which can change the strategy in which you fight bosses. If you're a beginner that wants to rely on Bernie, that is your skill tree. This is the maximum, like, maximum noob Bernie skill tree. Never mind, I lied, I messed up. You're only going to be using your embers to cast Fireball. Bernie will protect you because he is tanky and he will deal damage back to everything. Um, yeah. This is heavy reliance on Bernie. So next is what I would think is comfy and you get to use the other ones. So I think this is pretty cozy and you get a bit of utility. You still have a very tanky Bernie, but instead of Bernie doing the crowd control, you're doing the crowd control with Lunar Fire Razor instead. And you get the utility of Fireball and you got Combustion to kill everything. Here I ditched Burning Frenzy because a lot of bosses can't be set fire, but Burning Frenzy is good. You do get more damage, but usually it won't matter because if you're fighting like a bishop in the ruins, the bishop will be attacking Bernie probably because Bernie will grab its aggro. So you're not taking the damage. Oh yeah, if you're a beginner, you wouldn't have killed CC, I suppose. If you're a beginner who hasn't killed Fuiva or Celestial Champion, then you can't get an affinity. So yeah, you just get Burning Bernie and then unlock Fireball. You'll be cozy gaming. People are asking, does uh, this get affected by... Does this get affected by uh, electric damage? Uh, yes, it does, but it only buffs the physical aspect. And so since every hit is 50 damage, it's th uh, 30 plan on 20 physical. Let's see how much of it gets buffed. And I'm doing 108 damage. Now remember, that's like the electric damage doing lots and I'm getting my affinity bonus and I'm getting a bonus because this is a shadow enemy and I'm using a lunar like skill. So I'm getting 1.1 multiplied by 1.1, multiplied by 2.5, multiplied by 1.2, 1 1.2, 108 damage per hit. 
uh, the actual dedicated videos that will be good will be on the main channel in like a month or something. I don't know. I have to make them. They'll take a while to make. Anyway, so say goodbye, Twitch chat. Goodbye. Say goodbye, everybody. Give them a couple of Mr. Scruffles. Mr. Scruffles, thumbs up.